Okay, guys, before I proceed to calculate the normal force to show you how it is done, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Do you understand what components of a vector are? Can you add vectors in one dimension? We will need these skills as we proceed with the video. If you don't understand what components of a vector are, please feel free to watch our video on components of vectors on a horizontal surface, also on an inclined plane. And then if you don't know how to add vectors in one dimension, also there's a video for you guys that you can watch on how to add vectors in one dimension. Once we got ticks there and the tick there, it means we are good to go. The skill of calculating the normal force is dependent upon these two other skills, they're all complementary, okay? The normal force is a force exerted by a surface on an object that it is in contact with. It's almost like a reaction force. Remember, forces act in pairs, so the, surf the object presses the surface, the surface reacts to that pressing. It is always perpendicular to the surface. Okay, so you must be able to calculate the normal force that acts on a horizontal surface and also on an inclined plane. To do that, we're going to follow three steps. Three simple steps. One, draw a free body diagram. It's always good to draw the components or to draw perpendicular forces on your free body diagram. Number two, consider all forces acting perpendicular to the surface. They are going to be parallel and anti-parallel to the normal force. Equate these forces to zero and solve for the normal force. Okay, let's see how we go about this. We are asked to calculate the normal force in each of the diagrams AB with friction in the mix. Let's go to diagram A. Well, we need to construct a free body diagram. Again, there is a video on how to draw free body diagrams. Please guys, watch that video if you don't know how to draw free body diagrams. Drawing free body diagrams is at the heart of mechanics. It's an important skill, okay? Now, those are the forces that we have. But we're gonna focus on the forces that are perpendicular to the surface to calculate the normal force. So it's gonna be the normal force itself and the gravitational force, or the weight. We're gonna make the upward direction positive, almost like a Cartesian plane. So this will be a Y axis. So the Fn is in the positive direction, Fg is in the negative direction. Fg is 50 times 9,8. It's 490 newtons in the negative direction. Then it means the normal force minus the 490 is equal to zero gives me the normal force is 490 newtons in the upwards direction so there we go so the downward press was the 490 newtons the upward direction was also 490 newtons okay in diagram 2 we've got a 40 newton force acting in 2d so we need to show the forces the components of that 40 newton force in the horizontal direction and in the vertical direction okay so the component horizontal is fx the component vertical is fy to calculate the normal force we only need the vertical forces why because they are perpendicular to this surface here it's a horizontal surface so these forces are the ones that are perpendicular to the surface okay so we're gonna Remove the forces that we don't need and let's focus on those that we need. Again, equate these forces to zero because there is no movement in the y direction. So these are balanced in this direction. In the same way in the previous example, the forces were balanced. The perpendicular forces were balanced. The perpendicular forces are also balanced in this case. Now, F Mg is equal to Mg, 40 times 9,8, 392 newtons. So this 392 newtons is going to be what? Again, if you use the same idea, it will be a negative 392 newtons. The Fy, Fy equals F sine theta, we've talked about how to calculate components. So it's 40 sine theta is 20 newtons. So this 20 newtons will be upwards. 
it's going to be a positive force. Now with these two forces, we feed into the equation. All now we have to do is to simplify and get Fn is equal to 372 newtons upwards. Okay, that is how you calculate the normal force. Draw a three body diagram. Draw perpendicular forces, include the components. Focus only on those forces that are perpendicular to the surface. Equate those forces to zero. And then solve for the normal force. My five minutes is up guys. It's now your turn to do some practice questions. Stick around, don't disappear. Practice makes perfect. So we are asked to calculate the normal force in the following diagrams, C, D and E. So in this slide, we're seeing diagram C and D. We're gonna move to the next slide, we'll see diagram E, okay? So let's focus on C and D for now. You're going to press pause. Work out the normal force, calculate the normal force. Once you're done, the answers will be provided. Press pause, do the calculation, and then when you're done, we carry on. Okay, for diagram C, we need to draw a free body diagram again, okay? And try and make sure that we draw all the forces that are perpendicular to the surface okay so it's very important that we, we develop that skill so we'll have the weight going down this is the stat, uh, static friction okay the x component of the 50 newton force the y component of the 50 newton force and the normal force very important to note that the, this force, even though it's pushing on the box, when you represent it on the free body diagram, we always draw pulling forces. Okay? All right. Again, we are interested in the forces that are perpendicular to the surface only. Okay? So this leaves them with three forces. Normal force, the vertical component of the 50 newton force and Fg. Okay. So the upward direction is positive. Okay. Next thing, equate the three forces to zero. All right. Fg is equal to mg, 35 times 9 comma 8, 343 newtons. Fy is equal to F times sine theta, 50 times sine 60 degrees, there's a degree missing there, 43,3 newtons. Now we can substitute those values into that equation. The Fg is a negative force, Fy is a negative force. Okay, the normal force is 386,3 newtons upwards. That's how you can do it. What happens when now with an object moving on an inclined plane? Here the knowledge of the parallel and the perpendicular components is always important. When an object moves on an inclined plane, those two components become important. So when we draw a free body diagram, I always encourage you to draw those two components in the diagram. So the free body diagram would look like this. Static friction, weight uh, parallel, weight perpendicular, the normal force. Again, in this case, we're gonna be interested in these two forces because they're the ones that are acting perpendicular to the surface. We're gonna ignore the static friction and the weight parallel. We are left with these two. So we would imagine this is a tilted y-axis. This is the positive direction and this will be the negative direction, okay? Fn plus Fg is equal to zero. Fg perpendicular is 271,60 newtons. 
we know that you to calculate fg perpendicular is mg times cos of theta so the fg perpendicular is in the negative direction all right we end up with fn equals 271,62 newtons perpendicular to the slope so guys that's how you calculate the normal force by using those ideas okay it is now um, time to look at the last question okay it is now time to look at the last question remember we said we're doing C D and E so what you're gonna do look at question E pause the video this instant do a calculation and then see what happens the box of mass 100 kg is held stationary on an inclined plane by a force of 120 newtons there's the 120 newtons the force is applied at 20 degrees to the incline as shown there you see so it's 20 degrees to this incline the angle of inclination is 30 degrees calculate the normal force that acts on the box so in essence we want the magnitude of the normal force because we know that it's going to be perpendicular to the slope so pause the video guys and then continue when you're done okay step one as usual draw a three body diagram we want to see all the forces that are acting almost like a T diagram I hope you've seen that pattern now we always draw like a T diagram in that way we can easily eliminate the forces that are parallel to the surface and we remain with the forces that are perpendicular to the surface with that approach so let's draw our T diagram so the first two forces that are FG parallel FG perpendicular they are perpendicular to the slope I mean the FG perpendicular is perpendicular to the slope FG parallel is parallel to the slope then the static friction is holding the box there now the 120 newton force is going to have a component parallel to the slope that's we are referring to as fx right it's going to have a component that is perpendicular to the slope we're going to call it fy and then we also have the normal force in the mix now once you always draw a three body diagram like this, almost like a T diagram, like a T all the time, draw a T diagram. Whenever you're calculating the normal force, if you've drawn a T diagram, you can eliminate the horizontal forces or the forces parallel to the slope. You remain with the forces that are perpendicular to the slope. We're going to use these forces to calculate the normal force. Now. So, upwards is positive which means downward is negative we're imagining this is a tilted y-axis yeah? we've just tilted the y-axis okay now we can calculate fg perpendicular by using mg cos theta 100 times 9 comma times cos 30 88 newtons right we can also calculate fy f times sine theta Remember in the previous videos guys we've talk, spoken about how to calculate components okay at this stage you should be able to calculate components we've talked about in the previous videos once we've got these two forces we're going to equate the three forces to zero that has always been the approach because the argument is these forces are balanced these perpendicular forces are balanced they're perpendicular to what to the surface and then we substitute in Fy is going in the positive direction, it's a positive force. Fg perpendicular is going in the negative direction, it's a negative force. The result is the normal force is 807,66 newtons. Guys, that is how you can calculate the normal force. I hope at this juncture you're able to calculate the normal force on a horizontal surface and also on an inclined plane by following those three steps why do we need to be able to calculate the normal force it is so much important it is so much a necessary skill because it is related to another force the frictional force so 
when we discuss these related ideas next we're gonna see the, how the normal force and the frictional force that acts on an object are linked now that we can calculate the normal force it will be much easier to calculate the frictional force so in the next video guys we'll talk about how to calculate the frictional force and the two kinds of friction thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed this video fun with vectors and forces we'll see you guys around next time